Hello, hello everybody, welcome to the Sanchez Room. Today we are taking a look at DigiSticks. Yes, yes, the new drum machine and drum sampler from Four Pockets. So, let me get on my stream as per usual to see who's here. Hope you've all had a nice day today. And uh, here we go, see who um, who's watching and, and everything. And <coughs> we shall get on with it. Yes, yes. Oh, 18 watching, my word. Right, <laughs> okay. Um, right. Um, right, okay, Andrew, Paul, Stephen, the other Paul in review, I was hoping a new version. Yes, yes, there is a new version coming in a few days. Um, and with uh, with different things, I, which is probably I should have waited for that one. But however, we shall do this one anyway. And then in a few days when the update is, because the update is used in... Uh, it, 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 it adds a lot of new stuff like drag and drop from the files app and stuff like that. So, you know... Anyway, what we got? Okay, so we have loads and loads and loads and loads of cool user kits that the, the Paul is putting, which we shall have a listen to also. And then we can have banks. We can have different banks. I've got a user bank here. This is the default bank. You have uh, your output section with a nice bit crush on there. Then you have effects return levels here. Now you can set the level, uh, the individual return levels for the... Decay and reverb as well, which we'll get into and all that stuff. Um, right, okay, so, and then we have tempo and sync. Okay, so this is running in standalone at the moment for this particular demo. And then we have a filter here, and then we have a tube overdrive here, which is very nice. Then we have our the start of our pattern grid sort of thing, you know, where we can make our patterns. Whew. Right, okay, and then we have our tracks. So we have nine to 16, and you will see it goes down from nine to 16 because we have 16 pads, uh, so you have the, the grid there. And then you have events, so you can have up to four bars long, up to 64 steps, okay, uh, here, here, and here. You can edit like this, or you can edit on the fly. To get it to play those four bars, you have to set your length here sort of thing, which we'll just also get into. Then you have in this version, uh, up to 24 patterns that you can store. And I think you have up to 250 steps to make a song, right? Okay, so here we go. Let's just have a listen to a few of the cool uh, acoustic, like a few of the cool kits. Now, what I've done here, what you do to save a pattern, you're actually saving a song, okay? So you might think, well, where, where are all my patterns? Well, you don't get any patterns. You have to make your own for a start off, but they're saved as a song. So you, your pattern control is here. You can clear a pattern, you can copy, and you can paste a pattern, okay? And then on song mode here, you have load, save, and delete. Okay, to load a song is to load a previous pattern or bunch of patterns that have been constructed into a song. Okay, so which we'll cover as well. And then also to save a song, which is like you can save a new pattern. All right. Or you can load. Now, I've, these, are the, these are some of the ones that I've been uh, messing around with, just playing a few different bits and pieces. Now, you'll see this one here. I have it called Test Plate. So we can select this and you'll see that it goes down from bass drum and you'll see I also have it on 50 BPM, which is really, really slow. And if we go down to our 9 to 16, you'll see it just carries on down there. So what this, I've set this up basically to run through a few of the kits for you. Okay. So like if we play now, this will just scroll through at 50 BPM, all the sounds in this kit in, in linear fashion sort of thing. So you can hear the sounds in the kit. So, <coughs> excuse me, we'll do a couple of them. And if we scroll down here to our pads, it just would be the same as doing this, you know? But it's a lot easier to just let it play and select the pattern. And then it get, it's great because it's really quick and you can hear some of the cool, you know, kits that come included. And there are an awful lot, but most people are going to have the greatest fun in this, importing their own samples. But let's have a listen to a few of these. These are our default drum kits here. So we can change the kit.
if you like some of the sounds, you can choose the kick, you know, make a new pattern. Okay, so you get the idea. This is how you can go and you can go and sort of listen to all the all the kits and stuff like that. You can build your own initial initialized pattern or anything you like. But I just set this up for the stream so you could hear a few of the the things. Right. Okay. So like at the moment, that's an actual song. All right, but it's it's called it's called test plate. So if I clear this now, right, just hit clear. And it will clear this pattern out, but it will still be on test plate and it will still be on classic 80s kit like this. Okay. All right. What the first thing I want to do is because I want to do some editing on that kit and I can't edit the actual um, user kits sort of thing. If I try and edit them, it won't let me. For instance, if I go down to here and I select a sample from the sample section, so this is um, the kick drum here, and then this would be the snare. If I say, oh, I want to edit that now, it will say not editable. You have to copy this pattern to the actual user section. So that's what we shall do. So I'll show you how easy it is. So we're going to copy this classic 80s kit over to the user section. So this little plus here, we can just tap on that and it'll say copy drum kit, okay. And it'll say, do you want to copy it to instruments or user? We'll just copy it to user and yes. And if we go into our user section now, user, and we go down to classic 80s kit, we've got the same kit, same pattern loaded, which is cleared now. And if we wanted to edit that snare for, or Let's just say, let's edit the, I don't know. Let's edit that high tom. Whatever we select, we can choose it here anyway. So for instance, this this um, this hi-hat. If we go to edit, now, let's just put it there like that, so we're reading. If we go to edit now, it'll let us edit our, our sample, we can crop it, we can clear it, we can fade it in, fade it out, we can normalize it, we can read, like for instance, we can reverse it. So let's have a listen to this. Um, where's the play button? So that's reversing that sample. So let's turn it back around. So don't forget, all I've done is copy over an actual um, default kit, you know, uh, into our user section, and we can do all, all our editing and stuff. Say we wanted to normalize it. Okay, so let's just normalize it to normal. And that's actually made it quieter. So let's normalize it again to, which is about where it was. So, and then we can go up to, I think, 0, 0.0, the normal thing here like this. So that's that. Okay. So let's do this. Let's update that sample. Okay. That sample has now been updated and is now stored as the edit we've made okay so nothing drastic but you get you can the way you can edit let's quickly program a quick pattern and save it to our thingy so there's several ways to do this we can record in as normal via the pad so we could go like this and uh, let's just start this playing okay good thing to do is engage your metronome And right, here's an interesting thing to remember. Because I was, I'm now playing with the kit that was called Test Plate, and I had it running very, very slow. Oh, thanks to Great MIDI. Uh, right, because I was playing with the Test Plate kit, we can now speed this up. Let's speed this up to, uh, okay, we'll do this with, let me just do it with me pen so I get a bit cleaner. 100 BPM I want it to be. So, uh, uh, 
I need m more control. So, okay. Well, that'll do. 90, 98 point. Right, it needs a, what this needs, Paul, is a double tap and a put key in your tempo. Right, anyway. It's going to be playing it nice. Um, cool beans. We can just record that in if we want to. And as soon as we arm our record... Okay, so it's only going across 16, but say we want it to be two bar loop, okay? Yeah, we definitely need to find control. Find control, Paul, find control. Okay, so we want a two bar loop. We tap on this that says next to pattern one here, like this, and then we choose eight four, okay? So what that will do is set us over 32, I think, let me just see. And then they'll be blank, obviously. Right. But say we didn't want to go through all the rigmarole of, of you know, drawing it in again or tapping it in again. What we can do, I think this might work, although I'm not sure it'll work over one pattern, but it might. We could try copying and then going to our... 32 and paste. I don't think that's work, does it? No, I think that will be to copy to another pattern. I was oh hi David, how you doing? Hi Mitch. Copy the whole copies the whole pattern, Doug. Right, okay, cool. So what we could do now is then we can go to our next set of events, 17 to 32, and then we could another way of putting them in is we could go like this. Um let's have a listen to this now. Here's another thing you might want to do as well. If you're editing while it's playing, like if you're just entering notes while it's running, which you don't need the record on for, obviously, you might want to just stay on one section. So, for instance, it's playing this, and I just want to be on the 17 to 32 steps. So if we go into this little plus and turn auto pattern follow off, We can then stay on that and edit, edit properly. And then go back to our first 16 steps. Okay, um, I, that's quite nice, so let's save that now. So to save this pattern, we need to be saving a, as a song. So let's just call these, uh, so let's put save, and it'll ask us what we want to save it to. Well, test plate is already there, so we don't want to be overwriting now, because if I hit save, it'll say it already exists. Do you want to overwrite it? Etc. Etc. That kind of thing, you know. There's some people. There's 68 people watching. Strike the like. Strike the like. Strike it now. Right. So let's just call this. Uh, I don't know. Smooth vibe. Smooth. Oops. Smooth vibe. Okay. Save now. Okay. If we look at our loading section now, we'll see we've got smooth vibe, and it's got a little tick by because this is the pattern that we're working on. Super cool beans, okay? Super cool beans. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this pattern onto a new pattern, which is the what I, I got wrong earlier, which is saying I, I thought I might be able to copy half a pattern onto another half a pattern, but you can't, so that's okay. So what we shall definitely do now is in pattern here, we go copy, copy is patterned, pattern is copied, open where it says pattern 001, we'll go to pattern two, 
And now all we need to go is paste. And yes, we shall paste. And we'll paste it on our new pattern too. Now, yeah, the effect section is up there. It's it's dead basic. All right, right. It's not gonna be vape. So we've got this new this new one now, which is pattern two. So let's play that. And let's just take the focus back onto both of them. Shouldn't that be tracking over? Yeah, I'll show them how to do the send and stuff. I've got this set on auto pattern follow on. And so it shouldn't it track along to me next 17 to 32s? Except it's not now, look, see. I'd have to go. Right. That's a right. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, that's another thing to do is when you swap over pattern, you it it will default to sixteen again. Okay. Okay. So we need to set this to this to what Paul's just said to eight four again, so it tracks over both. So, right. Sorry, Paul. And I can put now back on auto pattern follow on. Okay. So just go back to the beginning and. So we've got pattern two now, which is identical to pattern one. You can have different patterns. Yes. And also different time signatures. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Paul, sorry. I, I just, you know what I mean? Okay. Now, but it's a good job you're here, isn't it? For, for this kind of moment. Now I want to make some adjustments now. So for now, I am going to go auto pattern off and just make some adjustments to the first part of this pattern. Okay. Actually, gives me an opportunity to show you something else as well. I don't need the metronome on because it's annoying me now. Okay. I'm going to show you some of the cool stuff, th the way you can add, you can add notes in. So we've got this first one. Let's see. Fade rolls. Okay. So if we select our hi-hat here, um, this one. Our closed hat. If I hold on closed hat and I, right, if I do this, if I drag, I can just drag in a load of notes. They'll all be at the same velocity. That's fine. And then it'll go over to our second part of the pattern, yeah? If we hold and then we drag again, we can take them away. If we hold, hold fade rolls like this and then drag along, what it will do is create a velocity ramp for those hi-hats. Also, if we want to accent any of these notes, we can just double tap on it like this and it will turn red and that will be quite loud. So very cool. Now, if we go over to 1732 now, and let's take all these clo close heights. So the second part of our our two bars sort of thing. And we want to start at the higher velocity and fade out. This is cool, right? Instead of holding it at this end, 
we do. We we just hold fade rolls. We go to our hi hat channel. We start at this end and scroll backwards like this, and you'll see the velocity goes in the opposite direction. Then, so if I double tap this one and make that the accented, okay, what will happen now when we play our pattern from the beginning? And we can we can see this now if I re-engage our auto pattern follower. The velocity of the hi-hats will increase to it the maximum, right? Let's go and have a look at events 1 to 16. will increase to their maximum there, and then from 17 to 32, they will decrease as well. Okay. This is very cool for creating really fast and quick uh, velocity ramps, you know? So listen to this. Cool, eh? That is proper cool. So now this is pattern two. All right, it is. It's great for snare rolls, but it doesn't stop there. You can do a lot more that than that. Let's now let's do this again. Let's copy. Let's copy this pattern. So we'll copy pattern, pattern copy, and we'll go to zero three, uh, pattern number three here, and we shall paste the pattern. Yes, and this time I shall remember to go to eight four thirty two. Great. Okay. So you'll need to ask Paul about MIDI and stuff like that. Uh, just uh, he'll, he'll have seen that, so he'll, he'll probably answer you. Right. So it's AUV3 anyway, but I need to do this in 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 standalone mode. So I'm, you know, because it's a, like a tutorial for this. So now we have pattern number three. We've set our length correctly now to 8.4 over 32 steps, which is two bars. So what we need to do is just ch check it all works. Okay, so now that's identical. How can I use it with other synthaps? It's it's a, it's an AUV3. It's a drum machine. Do you know what I mean? It's it's AUV3. So you can use it with it with 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 whatever you like. It's a it's a drum machine, right? And anyway, we can then build whole songs with it. It does other cool stuff as well. It works as a plugin. Yes, yes, that's yes. It is. It is. It's an AUV3 plugin, right? Anyway. I'll digress, I'll digress. So I'm going to make a couple of little adjustments here. I'm going to put a couple of claps in there. On, on, on 17 to 32, I shall also put a couple of the claps in there. But on this clap, I shall um, double tap uh, to add, and it will make it the accented clap. Now, on the second part of this, this one, I'm going to take out some of these... Um, like this one, this one maybe, this one and this one. And on a few of these, I'm going to do something else. So take that one out. And I'm going to add a quarter note triplet there. So I'm going to hold this and put that in there. And now that has become a quarter note triplet on that hi-hat. Okay, so this is this is super cool. So we get this kind of effect now. Maybe you didn't hear that. So maybe what we should do is make that accented, make that one accented, and we shall do um, quarter note triplet there, and also quarter note triplet there. So you'll get now you'll get much more. You should have added sixteen note triplet. Uh, okay, where? But well, well, I'll add a sixteen note triplet at the end then. Okay, I hate sixteen note triplets. I really do. After it sounds like a machine gun. There's nothing. There's nothing natural about a sixteenth note triplet. <laughs> Here we go. See, pretty cool. So we've added some triplets and stuff, and some claps. We'll add a couple of claves there and there. Okay, now 
What else have we got in our arsenal of sounds here? Let's go and have a look at uh, tracks number 9 to 16. So we have some... Ride. Let's do this. Let's put the ride. Let's put that in there. So we're putting a ride in halfway through that first bit. I was just going to do reverse crash pull on that ride there, which is more or less the same thing. So let's hold reverse here and just add it to that ride. And now that will reverse as it's playing, okay? So you can also do this in, in the actual deep note editing, but for now we shall do this, right. Okay, let's play this, what we've got now. Very nice. And we can, if we want to, we could then start to add some And we could actually do that, we could just record them in Right, so now we've got a um, we've got a, we've got we've got a, a bit of a a bit of, we've made we've made three patterns so far with our kit that we imported from what have you. Um, let's see what else we can do. All right, so we've had a look at the sampler. You can you know import new stuff and things, but I want to show you a few more of the actual features. So bass drum, if we swipe up. It takes us to the actual edit menu for that particular drum. So we can close it there. If we long hold, there it is there in edit. Okay. So it's, sorry. We can edit it directly from holding the pad. Okay. So that's cool. We can swipe up and, and actually we can do the reverse sampling from there or we can change the pan position or the reverb send or the delay send. We can tune each individual pad from here, which is the bass drum pad, as you can see, and we can, we can control its length. So if we were to play this, let's play it. Let's swipe up. Let's... But say, okay, we want to really hear what's going on there with what we're going to do, okay? Let's just hit bass drum, and that's now soloed the bass drum. So you can do this with, with any of the instruments. Now you've got a solo bass drum and a solo hi-hat. Or just solo hi-hat, or solo bass drum. So we're just going to do solo bass drum, and we're going to swipe up again, and we're in our edit section. See, I've really gated that now. Okay. So what we can do now is we can tune it. It's quite nice. Or let's close this a sec. Let's have a look at our effects. Okay, so our... Reverb is enabled, and now I've enabled our delay. Let's we can edit the reverb here, and also we can edit the delay. But there's nothing going on here. There's there's no reverb or delay other than anything that was going on before, right? So let's put a bit of uh, let's do this. I'm gonna put some more snares in. Put some reverb on that snare. Okay, so again, what we need to do is just swipe up here and within our snare menu, and there's our reverb send.
And there's our delay send. Okay. And we could edit the reverb actually. So let's make it. Before I go any further, I'm gonna save smooth vibe. Yes, I'm gonna overwrite it. Okay. So now I've saved that song and let's make this into a song okay oh yeah yeah let's try the overdrive I'll, I'll try the overdrive as well Paul while we're here so look, just let me so here's the overdrive I particularly like the bit crush so that was the overdrive this is the bit crush I, I like the bit crush a lot Okay, so we've got these three pans. We've had a quick listen to the, um, you know, how you construct the pattern, how you make patterns, how you save patterns into the thing, how you make the pattern to be up to the four bars long that you want. What we could quickly do now is go song. But let me also show you as well. You have a full mixer. So... Full mixer here. Controllers, this is this is ridiculously cool a controller section. I'll show you that in a sec. Then we have a dedicated EQ. And we have song mode. Now, Digistix knows that we have we have three we have three patterns, pattern three, because they're highlighted in blue. We can go back to pattern one. So we can we can select our patterns from here as well. And people always remember to save. Keep saving, save all the time, save is good, saving lots and lots and lots, save, save. So you don't want to lose any of your data or your programmed info or anything like that. Okay. Right, so let's um, do this. Right, so we've got our pattern. So we've got pattern one, two, and three. And here are the song chaining features. And we can go up to... Well, it's, it's, it's a lot, isn't it? Look, 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 look. Oh, um, 200 and something, is it, Paul? I can't remember. 200, you can chain up to 256 patterns in any order you like. Yes, yes. And I'm not going to demo it in, in AUM today. It'd take too long. I'm not, I won't get through everything I want to show you tonight, but, but I've got to do another demo anyway. I want to do another demo when it gets updated. I was going to say, me and Paul were talking about, well, so we wait till the update comes and we don't know when the update's going to come. We plan to do it for today. You know what it's like, you know? How to loop patterns. Well, I'm looping them now, mate, aren't I? I'm looping them now. I'm doing it now. I'm showing you now. Exactly this look, song chain. So we're in song mode, right? We can select any of our patterns to start, but let's 
let's start with pattern one. And here is song change. So this is section one of your song. Okay. Here we go. Add. So it adds pattern one to section two. Okay. Add. It's added pattern one to song chain two. Add. Now, if these were four bar patterns, okay, so let's just keep it straightforward. So this is going to be two, four, six, eight. It's going to be 16 bars of pattern one. Okay. But say, for instance, oh, look, 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 look. I can't look. So delete and delete will take the pattern in that you've put in sort of thing. So let's have four bars of that. Now let's go to pattern two. Okay. And let's go add, add. And it's added pattern two. So let's go to pattern three and let's go add, add. And let's go back to pattern two. And let's add. So you can see this is how you build up. So you might just want to have a few fills and things, you know, like uh, and stuff like that going on. Okay, brilliant. So we go back here now to start, and when we're in song mode, now this is important. To get it to play in song mode, you have to engage song mode up here, okay? Otherwise, it will just play the pattern because that's how it works. Then when we hit play, right, that was at the end. So we need to select the, the part of the song we want to start at. Now, this is good because, say, for instance, you just want to edit a particular part. You're not having to sort of go back to the beginning. Listen to the whole thing. But anyway, here we go. So we've made our little song now. So let's play it. And we're over to the next one. So there you go. That's how you build a song up. Okay, I don't need to go into any more detail of that. You can see how it works sort of thing. Uh, what's the swing like on it? Good question, Andrew. So let's do that. Let's try a swing, yeah? So let us go out of song mode now. And let's uh, just play. Let's just play this pattern. Here's swing. We have 16 swing as well. Oh, that's nice. Right, so we've done swing and stuff like that. So yeah, there's a lot of features to get to. It's really, it's, it's really deep. It's really neat. Uh, Paul, dude, dude, you can hear the swing. Oh, don't wind me up, mate. Don't wind me up live. You know what happened last time? <laughs> right. There's a lot to get through, Paul. People understand how swing works. All right. Can you record it in Cubasis? Yes, it's AUV3. Right. Okay. Listen, listen, listen. It doesn't stop there, people. It doesn't stop there. So look, what, what cuts I've got now. In my kits here, I'm in user section. In my kit here, I have one called LoopKit 120. Let's open LoopKit 120. Uh, not save. Do I want to save it? Yes, yes, I would like to save it. So now we've opened LoopKit 120. Let's take these all off now. Now, let's clear this pattern, doink. Yes. Now, the thing is, right, remember that I'm now starting afresh. Uh, I've got to set this back to 120 BPM. And it needs to be right on it, to be honest. Here we go. Oh, you bugger. Right. Oh, yes. 
I'm gonna do right. I'm just gonna save. I'm gonna save this as a new pattern. So save. Smooth looping, we'll call this. <laughs> the, the, the key is to smooth looping. The key is to keep saving stuff for freshness. You know what I mean? And, and that way you'll build up. You can delete your patterns and stuff anytime you want. You know, you can go into your song and you can have a song loaded. Say, for instance, any you could load up any of these that you've kind of done and then just delete it sort of thing. Right. Ding. Yes. Does it lock to the host tempo? You see this where it says host sync? Well, it's an AUV3, Atlas Jones. So, yes, but when you're in uh, AU, uh, when you're in AUM, or which we'll, we'll cover AUM in the next video when I've, when it's had its update, because I, I want to show you the other things that's been updated as well. So this is going to be, you know, because uh, I host sync will lock into your host tempo and that will be controlled by AUM or Cubasis or Ape Matrix or uh, or uh, Pro or whatever else door you're using, Nano Studio, what have you. Right, in this pack here, here we go. Right, so I'm going to go back to pads. I've only just started. There's a bass drum there, okay, but eventually I want to fill this up with loops. Loops of a speed of 120 would be ideal, but it does not matter, okay, because it does time stretching as well, or also it might just be a loop kit that you want to use. So what happens is, this is it, watch, listen. It triggers loops. Now I recorded that today in Cubasis via the Modi X. So we've got another one. And now we're both recorded at 120 BPM. Not that it matters because you can time stretch. However, it's a pitch sample, so I'm not really sure what would happen. So what that means is if you've got these, I know that both of those loops are four bars long, okay? Because that's how I recorded them into Cubasis. In fact, we can have a look in Cubasis here at those particular loops. If I, I know I might not, I might have deleted them, but I, I might not have. There they, there they are. So there are those two loops and one's been, one has been, um, what's it? So both together, they sound like, sorry. And it's not perfect because I didn't spend enough time editing. However, you'll get the idea. To get this to work, you need this to be four bars long. You need to have this set at the length of the loop you're using. So up to four bars long, okay? Any longer and the loop will trigger again and you will start to get it. It will start to get louder. It'll start to sound a bit weird. I happen to know that that is four bars long. So I will set that at 16.4, okay? And then I just want to put go back to events, one to 16, and I'm going to engage that loop in that one and that loop in that one. And what will happen now, well, actually, what we'll do is, so let's go back. Let's call this pattern one. Okay, and I'm going to copy this pattern. This is, you'll get this, it's really cool. So we're going to copy the pattern, pattern copied. And then I'm going to go to pattern two. And this is, don't forget, this is my new song. So I can, I can clear, clear this out. Clear, yes, clear the pattern. And I'm going to set this to 16.4 as well. And I'm going to engage both of those now for this okay but i'm also gonna set up a kick drum over all of my 64 step uh, my, over all of my four bars sort of thing so like this and this is pattern two what i'm going to do is i am going to start with pattern one so this would be pattern one that's a bit quiet. So let's see. Let's see. Let's just what we can do is normalize that. Okay. So I think that this is. Uh, let's see. That's loop one, loop two. Let's go to loop two and play that. Yeah. See, it's really quiet. So 
Well, for a start off, let's um, normalize it to say blood. Okay, brilliant. That's much better. Oh, did I actually save that? Did, did I? Sorry. Edit, um, normalize this one. Update me sample, cool beans. So now I've basically made that a bit louder, okay? Which is nice. And there's, there's some other very cool stuff you can do with important samples. I don't know if we're going to get time tonight, but what we don't get time for tonight, we can cover in the next video anyway, which is which is brilliant. Is this is Yes, this is the BT. This is the version that's available now, but the update should be out probably tomorrow. Anyway, so now we've got this. And I'm, let me go back to the beginning. <laughs> And then it'll just loop back around again. Can, can you get can you get how brilliant this is, right, for triggering loops? So you could literally, yeah, time stretching too. You could literally have an entire gig set up, well, you know, for, for, for four bars, set up on, on the pads. Now, it's the thing. What we're going to do is go to song mode now. Okay, so we can delete, we can delete this one. Number three, pattern number three. Actually, we can delete it all because I'm, 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 I've started a new song, so, and I can get rid of this one as well. I can empty that one and clear it. So, pattern one, okay? So, add. So, I'm going to add. Oh, there we go. I'm going to empty it. I'm going to make it some. Right, delete, delete. <laughs> I'm going to add pattern one to there and I'm going to have it play again, add. And then I'm going to have pattern two, which has got the kick drum and that, and that, and the water. Yeah, and round robin is coming. So let's add two more of those there, okay? Now, I don't think there is a way to loop the song at the moment, okay? So Paul, Paul might add that if that's, if, if that's a feature you want. What normally would do is just keep repeating the song. So... Like, for instance, um, go to this, add, add, and then go to number two and go add, add, add. But, yeah, I mean, I can see where looping the song would come in handy. So now we've done that, let's engage song mode because that's important. Let's do this. Let's see what we've got. Okay, guys, listen, I've really gone on um, as, as, as much as I want to for this one. But in the next one, I'm going to show you all sorts of cool stuff like importing from the files app. I, 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 let me just quick, I can quickly show you uh, stuff like this. So let us go with some sort of, uh, actually, we can leave it on the loop kit. It's fine because I've got things like, so there's pads, right? So there's nothing on any of these, right? So, for instance, say let's say, for instance, if we long hold here and we can go import from, we can assign a sound from any other kit anywhere in the thing, right? I'm going to say, let me check something here, yeah. So let's do this. Let's go to this here. For now, we can import from documents. We can assign from another kit. So let's say, let's assign from kit. And these are all the kits. Here's all the default kits here. There's all the, as soon as we select the kit here, there's a, let's say we could put a, um, let, we could put that high tom in there. So let's replace that with that. 
Now this is where this gets brilliant. Let me just import that sample onto this. Right, this is awesome, right? Listen, check this. Next update, we've got round robin coming and sample layering, so we could have uh, we could have two things like on this, but this one, this doing this one all this week, <laughs> not likely. <coughs> anyway, but let's say okay, so that's fine. Let's okay. I'm, I'm I'd rather have that on there. So let's go replace. Let's go add reference, right? So, ah, oh no, I wish I hadn't have done that now. Right? I wish I hadn't have added that. So let's go replace. Let's go, uh, wait a sec. Wait, what, how, what, how do you do this? This is epic, this is. Um, clear reference. And we're back to the what's it. So you, you can reference stuff it's completely non-destructive, right? Until you actually decide to import the sample. So you can just remove the reference sample. So you've checked out shit, you know what I mean? As, it, as you've gone, without destroying anything that you've made, which is just epic, epic. Let's take this one now, let's go, let's take this one. Let's go, oh, okay, let's, well, we've seen how we can assign from any kit, anywhere, anywhere in the world, anywhere, anywhere. Let's go from, we can import sample. We, let's import from documents, shall we? Okay, so no, we can't, we, we can, but there's a doc, right. There's a documents folder in the files app. But very soon, this is not gonna be necessary, but let's do this, let's go import sample. And this will open our files app. And at the moment, there's me two loops. But let's go to where uh, audio share files here and let's go to edit now. I don't know, let's see, there's some uh, special effects and stuff. Here, import sample successfully. Okay, so, okay. Let's go to this one quickly. And let's go import sample. Or we can record in as well. So let's try this one this time. Let's go to reflective. So these are all cool sci-fi samples and stuff. And if we go to uh, reflective, which is Dean, you know, Dean Daughters, electronic science, it's one of his things. Let's go to where, uh, depends what we want there really, doesn't it? Let's uh, let's stick a chord in, what's this thing? Let's, do, yeah. let's stick that in and let's see what that's like, okay? So now we've got. We've imported that sample from the files app. Now very soon, you're gonna be able to do this. You're gonna be able to take your files app, as long as it's in your selecting bar, you're gonna be able to take your files app like this. Hold it there like this. And you're going to be able to, this is in the next update, right, I think, that you're going to be able to take your clap here and drop it just onto the thing. For many of the, for many of the samples you have stored in your files, up. now you can just move it out of the way. And then you can move it back again when you want to do it some more. It's epic. It's epic. It's, it's, it's genius. All that. And it's a UV3, which we haven't even touched on. So that's the cool thing with the files app, you know. You just... It, make sure it's in your, make sure your files app is in your browsy bar thing like this or whatever, you know, you can do it with AUM, but it doesn't work quite the same as doing it with the files app, which is cool beans. And then you can scroll down your files app and etc. etc. You can search for whatever you want, anywhere you like and all the rest of it. And then you can just, you'll just, what you'll, it's cool because you'll just, have, you'll just need to pick it up drag it on, drop it onto a thing, and it'll be there. And that's that's genius stuff in it, you know what I mean? It makes life so much easier. So, 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 so much easier. Guys, and that's it for now. Uh, we shall get into, I mean, there's obviously, you can't see, the thing is, if you try and do it all in one, you can't do it all in one tutorial. It needs at least two or three, because otherwise it just gets way too confusing and stuff. And I haven't even touched on the actual using it in AUM or AUV3 yet, syncing it to the host, <coughs> that kind of thing, you know. I think, Paul, definitely the fine control on the metronome or at least a double tap and enter the value, that kind of thing, you know, would be because once you've, especially with with the ability to import uh, loops and stuff, you kind of need it to be set at the water. 
Anyway, I'm so excited about Round Robin on Head of iPad. Yes, it's very cool. It's very cool. Um, it is brilliant. It is brilliant because it's not just it's not just a drum machine. It's so much more than a drum machine. You can actually I got do you know what? I haven't even touched listen, oh gosh. I haven't even touched on the um the what's it, the remapping. Let me clear let me let me just let me get onto a Let's go on to this rock. Yes, yes, this basic rock kit here. And I'm going to clear uh, clear the pattern here. I'm not going to save anything this time. But um, I, I mean, I haven't even done this yet, right? So let's go to basic rock kit. No. Let's go to our, it, our default kits here. And Paul did this the other day. So you've probably seen it if you've watched it. But here's the chimes kit, right? <laughs> Let's hold, what you can do is you can melodically map a sound. So you could import a piano sound, say, or a synth sound or, or some sort of like marimba or vibes or anything. Let's, that's quite nice. Let's hold this. Melodic remap. So we can do MIDI map and we've got a sign from the kit again. We can change that. We've got our options there sort of thing. So we can set our pan and stuff like that. So you've always got access without having to swipe up. But you've got four options on these pads, okay? Swipe up, which is, you know, your reverbs. Swipe left. Oh, swipe down. <laughs> right. Okay. Hold it for hold, keep hold of it and choose melodic remap. This is going to ask you select the key. I, I go with the key of C, thank you. Select the scale. Hmm, let's see. Dorian's nice. Apply. Select clear sample reference to undo these changes. Okay. Boink. So if I was to hold now and it would go clear reference or make permanent. So we've still got the option to go backwards and forwards. We've not destroyed anything, but now. Now we've got a melodic kit from those chimes. And if we didn't want them, like I said, let's do this. Clear reference. Why did it not clear the rest of it? Do I have to clear reference on all? Do I have to clear reference on all of these? Uh, uh, uh. We take a little blinking day. Right, anyway, <laughs> it doesn't matter. You can do it in bulk from the menu. This menu. Menu to the right of song mode. Okay. Oh. No, I'm not seeing it. This is song. Oh, well, dickhead. Yeah, clear sample references. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. Good job, you're here. <laughs> Guys, it's top, in it, really. I mean, to be honest, it's fab. It's absolutely lively. Absolutely lively. Okay. So, I am definitely 100% going to get... What was that reminder for? I think I've got a blood test tomorrow. Dog, dog's bust was Doug's blood. And come on, I've got to go and have a blood test tomorrow. Right, anyway, guys, listen. Thank you very, very much for joining me this morning, uh, this evening. This evening, And with, uh, with Paul, the musician, who is the developer for Pockets Developer. He's a very nice chap. Spider, um, Audio Dabble, everybody. I, 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 I guess you, you really like the app. I think it's epic. Uh, I think it's so cool that you. Can, there's so much stuff you can do with it. You know, we're spoilt for drum machines. Like we'll have pulse out soon. That'd be cool. So we've got like um, another, at least another one video to do with this. At, at the very least, but being able to. I think being able to set this up in AUM, different drum patterns selected, a whole song, it's what AUM is. Another one of them things that AUM really needed, a super fast AUV drum machine 
a UV3 drum machine that can be pre pre programmed with a track sort of thing. We're getting into the realms of turning AUM into like a door now, which is awesome. Right, okay, guys. Uh, if you haven't already struck that like, strike it, please. Uh, and I am going to go. I will see you guys very, 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 very soon. Who will the next video? Yes, yes. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. See you later. Ta-da.